bring on the new side. We will speak about the impact of wind turbine layout on the wind farm output uh, power. Uh, the presenter is uh, Dr. Abdullah Shuraiti. He is the TA section head at Tanwir. Dr. Abdullah, Abdullah, please welcome to the stage. and I would like to talk uh, about the impact of wind turbines layout uh, on the wind farm output power. Uh, I, would, I would try to come up with the challenges in designing uh, the wind farm layout, uh, taking in consideration the aerodynamic uh, effect uh, and uh, wind farm layout optimization. Uh, as well, we'll, uh, you will see a little, uh, uh, some simulation uh, about the wind farm, uh, uh, that about 50 megawatt wind farm. When we are talking about the renewable uh, resources, currently uh, we are uh, aiming to reduce uh, the dependency on the fossil fuels. Uh, with our reliability in these uh, resources, actually, when we're talking about uh, wind and solar, uh, are uh, not in accepted level due to the intermittent uh, nature of these resources. Uh, there is an advancement technology uh, has led to substantial reduction uh, in the investment cost, especially while talking uh, also about the solar and wind uh, uh, projects. There are uh, challenges in the designing the wind farm. Uh, one of the challenges is uh, how to allocate uh, the wind turbines, or uh, what we call it wind farm micrositing, uh, or as wind farm layout optimization. Uh, there, is, there are uh, different factors. Uh, one of that factor uh, affecting the wind farm layout optimization is the, called the wake effect, which is uh, the aerodynamic uh, effect between the wind turbines. Uh, there is also, uh, and however, we, we can see there is a lack of an optimization start, uh, strategy to control, uh, to control the power losses in the wind farm due to the turbines layout and uh, to clear the assets and consider the result of the wake effect. What does we mean by the wake effect or the aerodynamic effect in the wind farm uh, due to the turbines layout? Let us, let us assume that we have uh, a wind turbine, uh, TI, and we have an, uh, with a free stream wind speed, V0, and we have another wind turbine uh, called TB. Uh, there is an effect in the there is an effect in the downstream wind turbine due to the upstream wind turbine. Uh, this is, uh, there will be a reduction in the wind speed reaching this uh, wind turbine due to the upstream wind turbine. This is simply the meaning of the, uh, of the wave effect. And we have, if we have another wind turbine, we call it here TM, there, there is only a, a partial uh, Partial effect in the wind, uh, wind in this wind turbine, we call it under the shadowing of the uh, of the upstream wind turbine. So simply the, the meaning of the wake effect, it's uh, uh, a reduction in the wind speed uh, reaching the downstream wind turbines uh, due to the upstream uh, wind turbines. <coughs> There are different uh, mathematical models that can rep represent uh, the wake effect model. Uh, one of the simplest uh, uh, model is called Gerson's wake effect model, and it's widely used in uh, software where we use the, now in the industry, uh, like uh, WASP and uh, another software called WinSim. Uh, this is the mathematical mathematical representation of the Gerson's wake effect model. Uh, it's not that complicated as you see here in this equation. Uh, it's simple, uh, uh, but I think I make a little more, more, more symbols here, uh, just for explanations. Uh, 
we have, this is what we call weight effect parameter. It's like uh, a binary number, zero or one. Uh, whenever there is an effect uh, on the downstream wind turbine due to the upstream wind turbine, that's mean one, otherwise zero. And that's represented in, uh, by this, uh, this mathematical representation. Uh, also, this, uh, the, the Gerson's wake effect model depends on the surface that we, uh, the surface roughness, uh, the type of the transfer of the turbines that we use. Uh, there are other factors uh, as we will see in the, in the case study, inshallah. When we talk about wind farm layout optimization, uh, there are different objective focal function, of course, and there are constraints. Uh, uh, we can say that there are common constraints, which are the, the, const the first constraint is the location. We have to allocate the wind turbines within the selected site, as well we have to keep a minimum clearance between the uh, wind turbines. And the objective function is to minimize the cost per unit power produced using economic uh, and denominator as, as you, you can see uh, the uh, economy of scale uh, divided by the expected output uh, power. The expected output power is uh, uh, depending on the wind, uh, wind, uh, wind speed, wind direction, taking in consideration that wake effect model uh, as well, uh, we take here uh, probability of occurrence of the wind speed. This flow chart shows uh, the uh, wind farm layout optimization when we are using uh, heuristic optimization or what we call this uh, genetic algorithm, particle swarm optimization. Uh, it used like, uh, we can use these uh, techniques uh, since we can get the optimal solution by such heuristic optimization techniques, uh, starting by the inputs like uh, wind, uh, wind turbine uh, probabilities, uh, site probabilities, uh, wind profile, we take care of wind speed magnitude and uh, direction. Uh, after that, we calculate the fitness value according to the, the after, uh, according to the velocity deficit and the Africa output power. There is a termination criteria. Uh, the ter termination criteria uh, is satisfied if their maximum number of generation is reached, or there is no improvement of our the uh, of our some what we call it stalled uh, generation limits. Let us uh, implement that as a case study for uh, using a wind, uh, wind profile uh, from a site uh, located in, uh, in south of Oman, where we have uh, the 50 megawatt wind farm. This is the actual speed. We use, uh, 50, we use one month uh, uh, wind, uh, wind profile. And it's recorded every 10 minutes. That means this data has, uh, has a resolution of 10 minutes. Uh, we used in our optimization the heurist, uh, the histi this host histogram, trying to minimize the computational time. Uh, and at the same time, we discretize the size. We, uh, we discretize the size. We use here in this case study uh, a site of uh, four kilometer by four kilometer, and we discretize that site uh, into cells, trying to minimize the computational time into a grid uh, resolution of 10 by 10 with each cell size of 400 by 400 meter. The characteristic, uh, the characteristic of the wind turbines that we use, uh, it, these are the characteristic of the wind turbines that we use the rated power 3.83 megawatt, uh, half height 80 meter, and the rotor diameter 130, 130 meter. This is the characteristic of the wind uh, turbine that uh, the same the wind turbine that we have in uh, the far uh, wind farm uh, project. Here are uh, the simulation results. The left one is uh, we have 18 wind turbines. And for this one, we can say that uh, uh, we distributed the wind turbines. That means we didn't optimize the, winter, the location of the wind turbines. 
and we put it, we put them like this, making clearance of five times the diameter of the uh, wind turbine rotor. And we see we have the optimized result here. We can see for the 18 wind turbines. Uh, the result uh, calculating the output power for this case of the unoptimized one and optimized one. We can see the, the curve here for three days output power. Uh, for the optimized optimized one in the blue one, uh, we can see it's less than the optimized one, and optimized uh, more than the optimal and optimized one, and we can see here the difference between them. There are some of the results that we got for the optimized and unoptimized one. Uh, we, we we have the same number of wind turbines, 18 numbers of wind turbines, and the generation is uh, 12 gigawatt for the optimized one and an optimized one is 12 gigawatt. Uh, efficiency, we get better efficiency, 68% uh, uh, in the optimized one and 64% in the unoptimized one. We mean by efficiency here the ratio between the output power, uh, uh, output power uh, when we take in consideration wake effect and uh, the out uh, divided by the uh, output power uh, when we, uh, while uh, we didn't take the uh, output into consideration. This, uh, this figure shows also the wind farm layout with the wake and without the wake. And this, we can see the difference between the two cases. Uh, this, uh, this difference is too high between the, uh, while we consider the wake effect and without the wake effect. And I think this is uh, something good for the planning engineers is not of, of, and not overestimating the wind farm generation. Of course, if we can say the, sometimes we said this is 50 megawatt wind farm, and it, uh, we can say it produce 40 megawatt, uh, but in, real, in reality, it can produce maybe 30 megawatt. And of course, we are uh, taking a uh, transformer size cabling and that thing. And as a conclusion uh, from my presentation, an analysis about difference between optimized and unoptimized wind farm layout has been conducted using multi-speed and multi-direction uh, to mimic a realistic uh, scenario. Uh, we used here Johnson's wake effect model uh, to estimate the power losses. Uh, compared to an optimized one, the result shows the superiority of the optimized wind farm layout uh, in terms of the power generation, e efficiency, and uh, velocity deficit. Um, and consideration of the wake effect model helped the planning engineers in not overestimating the wind farm uh, generations. These are some of the articles uh, that we published, if you are interested uh, in this topic. That's all, and thank you very much. Thank you.